What's going on YouTube? Joe here from Metafish. Hey, I have a, a topic I just had to bring up. It's been in the back of my mind now, so might as well record a video on it. Hope you like the background. Uh, got some, some fish that look uh, a little bit questioning there or sad or... Uh, fish rescues. Let's talk about them. The good, the bad, the scammy, the ones who are looking to get free fish and sell them for anything and make a profit. Um, when I hear the term fish rescue and I see it on Facebook, I just cringe because I've had bad experiences with the majority of people who claim to be a fish rescue and are actively advertising in hopes to collect as many free fish as possible. That's usually where you see these fish rescues pop up. Uh, the legitimate ones are going to be listed on Google Maps. They're going to have, for the most part, like a nonprofit organization, something like that. They're, they're going to have already put the thought and effort into this. So maybe you're thinking about starting a fish rescue and this video popped up on your YouTube. So hopefully this gives you some food for thought on what you need to think about and if being a fish rescue is really for you. So let's get right into it. The first question to ask yourself or to ask others is, and I'm going to say the word you throughout this video, but I'm not implying you personally, but let's just put yourself in the shoes and say you want to start a fish rescue. Question one, do you plan on being in it for the long haul? The long haul to me means five to ten years. If you just started this hobby last month, uh, you don't know if you're going to stay with it. You don't know if you're going to be able to handle the swings. Uh, the fish hobby to me is a lot like, like a drug, like a roller coaster. It's got ups, it's got downs. It's, it's, it plays with your emotions and if you're going to be doing a fish rescue, you're going to be losing fish. You're going to be dealing with sick fish. You're going to be maybe having babies in tanks you didn't expect. So you're going to have highs and lows. And you don't know if you're the type of person who's going to want to continue to do this. You may not know. But maybe you do know. So ask yourself or ask the other people. Think about the other people. Are they in it for the long haul? Fish have very long lives. Um, just an example. Angelfish, Oscars, Tetras, Placostomus. They have average life expectancies, cichlids, of 10 years about. Goldfish are even longer. I think their average life is about 15 years. So if you're not willing to really have a forever home for fish, that's going to lead me into my second question here. But uh, you, you have to be in it for the long haul, in my opinion, if you're going to label yourself a fish rescue. So my second question on asking yourself if you're a fish rescue or asking, trying to figure out if somebody else is a legitimate fish rescue, to me is more of an idea. It's, it's how, how do you really plan on operating and what are you willing to do for the people who bring you their pets, these fish? So if somebody comes to you and has a pet that they really care for, and let's just say their tank started leaking, they can't afford another tank, or they're falling on hard times, but they, they lo love these fish. They've had them for a year, two years, three years, maybe even longer. And eventually, they would like to get those pets back. Do you offer, can you offer them um, some terms of service, basically? I'll keep these fish and not try to rehome them and try to take care of them for six months, a year, two years, and give you time to get back up on your feet. Maybe I can help you get a used aquarium to those people. Maybe I can help in other ways. Are you there to help the people who are handing their pets over to you in good faith? Uh, so OHR, Ohio Fish Rescue, they go above and beyond this. They offer a service for people where they'll give those fish a forever home. If those fish have names and those people plan on visiting and they want to see their pets again, but they just uh, outgrew the tank and they can't care for them anymore, things like that. OHR has been known to give them forever homes and that's really admirable. That's something that not all fish rescues need to do in my opinion, but uh, it, that's what sets them ahead of the rest. And I'm sure there's other ones who do a similar thing, but think what you're gonna do for that owner who has a pet. Don't look at the fish as tangible objects. And do not look at it, at it like a business. If you're going to call yourself a fish rescue, you need to look at it as 
I'm doing what's best for the fish and to relieve the burden and try to help people that are going through a hard time with this. So how are you going to handle the fish that come in? Because they all come in under different circumstances. So my final question, and this is the most important, this, this is the one that everything's kind of alluded up to. And this is going to call out the scammers who are in this to make a business, and unfortunately that's what we see more and more nowadays. Are you in this to make money or are you looking to rescue fish? That's the, the third most important question. And you might have to dig deep down inside. You don't want to lose money. Who wants to lose money? They want to do a good thing, and nobody wants to lose money. But if you're in it to make money, let me be the first to tell you, you're going to you're gonna fail eventually anyways. None of these scammer fish rescues ever last any amount of time. Um, even us breeders, the ones who are legitimately trying to improve the hobby, increase and, and make a buck. I work very hard at this. My, min, my, my wage is probably like point, it's probably negative, I'll be honest. But if you're trying to do this with a fish rescue and bring in sick fish and just all the expenses that are incurred on something like this and bad publicity if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, you're going to fail anyways. So don't even bother. Um, you know, every time a fish has moved, it has stress. So you're only hurting the hobby as a whole. If you're taking fish in from people and then you're immediately rehoming them for a small fee, I mean... Anything that was free, anything you sell that for is profit, right? And I think that's what brings these people into this. I'm going to call it a scam, but I think that's what gets the negative attention here. Is people go, oh, if I can get stuff for free and then sell it for anything, that's all profit. But you're just doing a disservice to the hobby, and you're, you're hurting the fish, and you're hurting people. But but let me put it this way. Every time you move a fish, that fish is under stress. It has more chance to get sick. It has more chance to spread sickness to other fish. If you take it from one tank, put it in another tank, your tank, you're exposing it to more pathogens, more uh, back, different strains of bacteria. You, there's more chance that that fish catches something going from the person who gave up the fish to your tank to another person's tank, whether or not there's much stress during moving or handling that fish, which there usually is anyways. But uh, you're hurting that fish in the long run by rehoming it, using yourself as a middleman. So that's one thing to think about. And these fish rescues, in my opinion, for the most part, now granted, there are large fish that some people just will not take in. That's where places like the Ohio Fish Rescue set themselves apart by taking in big fish. Um, but there's hundreds of people out there looking for free fish and free supplies for their aquariums. And they're going to give those fish better forever homes than you will as a fish rescue who's acting as a middleman and transferring those fish. So anything under 10 inches honestly there's other people who will take that fish without the intent to resell it or rehome it in the near future so yes i'm sorry that's just my opinion that there's there there doesn't need to be a lot of fish rescues there only needs to be good fish rescues the ones who are taking in the big fish the ones who are helping the people get through stressful times helping the people get back on their feet so they can enjoy this hobby those are the only fish rescue I'm fish rest in my opinion so that's my opinion that's what it is um a few tips for if you see these fish rescues on facebook don't call people out don't start fights on facebook never threaten people even if it's in retaliation if they got ornery with you first send the admins of the group a private message and let them sort out the situation and see but don't <laughs> Don't call these fish rescues out because I, I honestly believe even you you may initially go, this is one of those scams that we just talked about. This is somebody who's trying to make money and doesn't hasn't thought about the right thing. So link this video. Send them a link to this video so then maybe they can think about what it takes to be a fish rescue and if they really want to pursue this. And then 
send the admins a message, you know, if uh, asked to see their tanks, asked to see, will they take big fish? What if I want to sacrifice my fish or hand over my fish and get them back in six months? I'm having issues right now. Is that a possibility? And if the answers are no to all those questions, then they need to rethink calling themselves a fish rescue in my opinion. So those are all my tips. I'd love to hear your comments down below. What do you feel about fish rescues? Do you have any great ones near you? And uh, I just really appreciate it and uh, thought this needed to be talked about. So thanks a lot, everybody. And until next time, bye.